At the center of the universe, at the border between the light and the dark, stands Castle Grayskull. For countless ages, the heroes of Grayskull have defended the universe against the forces of evil. Walk through the Hall of Living Pictures and learn the history and mystery of the masters of the universe. Dive deep into the mythology of Eternia, Etheria, and more. For those who know the stories of Grayskull will come the power. The power to be supreme. The power to be all-knowing. The power to be... Legends of Grayskull. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Legends of Grayskull, the fan podcast where we discuss the history, the mystery, the magic, and mythology of He-Man, She-Ra, Eternia, Theria, Primus, Nordor. We cover the Golden Books, Lady Bird Books, UK Annuals, Comics, Mini Comics, Magazines, Filmation, Jet Lag, anything and everything with that He-Man, She-Ra, New Adventures, Masters of the Universe logo. I'm Matthew Duch. That's Sean Skavarna. Sean, how are we doing today? <laughs> I'm still hiding from my kids. I like it. <laughs> As we all I'm, are. I'm good otherwise. <laughs> I'm good otherwise. Um, yeah. Th- th- this is this is going to be one of those episodes where you go, Sean picked this. Yeah, so yeah. deal with it, people. <laughs> so we'll, we'll jump right into it here. Well, this is episode nine of Legends of Grayskull. So, Sean, since you already let the cat out of the bag, this is yours. What are we discussing today? Last week got me in the mood to go to some pre turnia aspects of things. So we're going to go after the most divisive episode probably of the 2000X era, which is The Power of Grayskull. Um, season 2, episode <laughs> 9, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know what? I honestly wouldn't even say that it's the most divisive episode. But that it features the most divisive character. Most divisive. That, that I, I yes, I will reframe that. I'm sorry. The most divisive character. Um, and that's what's e- in the line. That's what's even this point. more interesting because I think almost everybody agrees that the power of Grayskull is an amazing episode. Um, but it's just it's just that one guy for some reason. <laughs> it's just that main character through the entire thing. <laughs> through the entire thing. <laughs> you mean Hordak? Because Hordak is the main yeah, character that guy. to me in this. <laughs> that guy. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll... And actually, uh, I, I will say real quick yeah. that uh, the, the one thing that I noticed rewatching it in the last, I, I'd say the last two or three times I rewatched this episode, which I've rewatched it quite a lot, is... I, for the longest time, was like, oh, 2000X Hordak never snorts. Oh, bull. Oh, he snorted. <laughs> I forgot how much he snorts in this he episode. He snorted. <laughs> I, li- I liked Hordak's voice in this. It was very, it, it, same as uh, Brian Dobson did with Skeletor. It was very reminiscent of the 80s, but it wasn't just trying to copy it. You know, mm-hmm. I should have looked up who did Hordak's voice in this. But, yeah, he really, he made it his own. Uh, same as same as Brian did with Skeletor, but it was still like yes. you don't even have to see anything. You hear like a clip of this episode in that voice, and you're going, "Oh, that's got to be Hordak," you know? Yep. So yeah. Uh, let me see here. I know, guys, I'm terrible about this. I was trying to look up real quick who wrote and directed this because I for I wasn't paying attention. Dean Stefan I, on both. Uh, well, I think it was uh, 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 Hartnell. Um, what's his first name? Gary Hartell. Gary Gary Hartel, th- thank okay, you. He directed but it and Dean. Dean wrote, I thought Dean wrote Dean it, but I wanted to double check. Wrote it that. and story edited the uh, uh, the episode. Yeah, that was. I, I always remember the Dean ones because those are usually like the bigger. Uh, the mythology gets bigger on some of those episodes, yeah. But then they're speechifying, so then that's automatically like, ah, I know who did right. it right there. Well, and he did. He did. Well, he was the overall series director too. You know, he was a big wig, so yeah, he. And he took almost all of the big plot point episodes. Like yeah, he did, that's, he that's did the what beginning. Yep. He did this one. He did uh, even even things like. Um, dang it, my mind's blanking. What's the one with the fish that you love? Uh, oh, uh, um, 
God, I can't think of its name now. Of that episode's name. But yeah, where Skeletor discovers that they're the powers in Castle the, Grayskull. Yes. Like even the some powers of those, in some of those off mm-hmm. episodes he still took because it, it you know, usually if Dean was doing it, you knew it involved like something major was happening here. Yeah. So even uh the two parter for the end of the season mm-hmm. for season one and I think season two's intro, right. uh the last stand. Both of the, uh, all three of those were all him too as well. So yeah, it's pretty much any game changer uh, episodes were him, right? For this series, so. Um, and this originally aired because I just found it on December thirteenth, two thousand and three. Aha. Christmas present. Shortly before my high school graduation. <laughs> That's that was what I was six been. years out of high school by that point. Yep, you're old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the grizzledness is showing every day. It's okay. <laughs> Especially now with having two kids at home and no <laughs> end in sight. Right. So, uh, All right. Um, so, we, so let's get into the episode here. Yep, let's do it. So, let's so do it, it opens up with this night. It opens right up with King Grayskull right off the bat. He's fighting Snake Man outside of uh, a very polished and clean-looking Castle Grayskull. And, All white and pristine. Yeah, little yeah. designs on it and everything. It was always, it was actually kind of a disappointment. They end up re-releasing that uh, the the castle, the Castle Grayskull in the two thousand X line uh, mm-hmm. during the Snake Men waves, you know. And you almost kind of wish that they had like they changed up a couple things about it, uh, the color of the sword that came with it, and this and that. There were a few differences, and, and at, at the time it was kind of like, well, why didn't they just like repaint it to look like this Preternia uh, Castle Grayskull, you know? And then they probably True. could have gotten all of us foolish collectors to buy a second Castle Grayskull <laughs> um, just with a simple color swap, but yeah, a random thing. I agree with that. <laughs> but uh, so he's fighting Snake Men. He ends up losing uh, his sword into the abyss, and uh, and then Hordak shows up, um, and then Adam wakes up. It was all kind of a dream montage thing. It gets really weird there for a second. Lots of flash forwards and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But I like this opening scene. It really, it really, especially when it originally aired, it really pumped you up. Like, oh my god, what's going on? Who's that? Why is he on top of a battle cat looking thing? You know, it's like, and then yeah. Adam wakes up in the in the in the cold sweat. You know, uh, but yeah, it, it it really got you pumped. This beginning scene here. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and it. The other thing I like too is it has the nod to there's King uh, Grayskull fighting the snake men in the battle or the snake armor, he man armor. Yeah. So, you know, it's the idea of here's somebody that looks just like who you think he's supposed to look to start the episode out. But wait a minute, you know, and like, if I was just watching this on cartoon network, this is the first time I would have been there going like, what the crap is going on? Why do I love this? This is amazing. Right. And it was, it was just fun. (laughs) You didn't think about all the stuff that we'll get into at the end of the episode. Um, right now you're like, Oh my God, what is going on here? And they even, uh, they even changed up the snake armor a little bit, not by much, but they changed it up a little bit so it wasn't a direct copy. Um, and, and it did pay off that line from Rise of the Snake Men, where the sorceress told Adam, you know, the power of Grace. Well, I can't remember the exact quote, but so, but along the lines of the power of Grace Gold will give you the help you need, or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And that was the first time he transformed into the snake armor He Man. And I always liked, um, not to tangent too far here. I always liked uh, that idea that, like, battle armor, snake armor, whatever, Flying Fist was an extension of the power of Grayskull, you know, helping He-Man when he needed it the most. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, and, I I mean, that's even written into, like, the bios now and all that stuff with classics. And yeah. I do like that aspect of, you know, the power is almost like foreseeing into the future mm-hmm. something that he might not realize, oh, crap, this is a problem. Right. So in this case, yeah, it's like, and it, it's the whole what could have been with we got snake armor, yep. we got the ice armor, and that's all that we got pretty much with the exception of a couple of, don't you know, forget, like curveballs. Don't forget the samurai armor. Well, that was that was the Anwar. I don't count that oh, as that's right. the Power that's of Grayskull. True. It was the legacy stuff, and and also the Mech armor, not Power no, Grayskull. No, you know, yeah. like that's that's the other character. But 
But like, I still the only one that I still to this day wish we could have seen on the cartoon would have been the battle armor, like the yeah. legit old school battle armor look, yep. updated for two thousand X. I almost wonder. I know there was supposed to be a horde armor He Man for the third season when the horde was released. He was going to go through another upgrade. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, and I lost track of it years ago. I know people were trying to get the horde because the horseman had designed it. They had the design, but as mm. far as I know, it's never been released. Um, mm-hmm. So, but that's that. I almost, I've always wondered in the back of my mind if, uh, if that was going to be based off the battle armor, you know. I don't know. That would have been, cool. been cool. I... To incorporate that, the H and the, the full body armor and stuff like that. So, yeah. maybe. But it, yeah, and if anybody yeah, the, knows if that has been released, let me know because I I lost track of trying to keep up with all those unreleased concepts years ago. But last time the knew it the um, well the the fu- the battle armor H mm-hmm. in general would have been a welcome thing compared to what they did with the asterisk on this, where it's the idea of the H. But for <laughs> me, like now, I would have just want to love the battle armor H and just be done with it. Hey, but hey. unfortunately they just never got their act together to figure that out on the show. Hey, the, ast- so. the asterisk H is pretty cool too. It's, it, 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 I don't know if I've ever, if oh. I've ever shown you. Uh, <laughs> look at you. It needs, it definitely needs touching up. I got this back in, in like 2004, <laughs> but, uh, I haven't, nice. I haven't shown you that before. Have I? No, yeah. no. This is actually it's uh it's from it's actually from the MVC comics is where my my tattoo guy uh traced it off of. Uh so Emiliano's nice. work red does not hold up well on my skin unfortunately though and I need to get it touched up one of these <laughs> days but yep. Nice. <laughs> I have no tattoos. I have I have really? this weirdness about it. I I don't know what I've I've always been the person that said I don't know what I need to put on myself permanently. It's just that's how I am because I'm like one time I was saying, oh maybe the Superman S. Another yeah. time maybe the He Man cross. Who knows? And just in general, it's like my mind just goes to too many things. I just go, eh, I'm not doing it. I'm, you know, it's like even my wife's name, my kids' names, like no, 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 no. I already know what they are. I know that. I don't have to that. <laughs> no, I like that. That's my only one. I wanted. I, I've always wanted to get another one, but I've just never had the. I just haven't gotten there. But uh, hmm. but yeah, I'm the, I'm not an overly tattooed guy. I don't know. Just because you're an artist, I guess I just kind of assume because most artists nowadays they have you know I don't know. It just goes hand in yeah, hand a lot. Um, but have you seen me? I don't look <laughs> like I should have half the crap that art. <laughs> I'm just like I'm Mr. Potato Head with a hood. That's basically how I feel every time I see this video. Uh, it's like here's Mr. Potato Head, glasses and a hoodie. We're good to go. Oh, Potato um, Head. More Mr. Clean. <laughs> well, all that Mr. Clean too. So. Um, all right, so let's see where were we? We back. were uh, yeah. so we had uh, the dream sequence. Yep. yep. And then we go to Adam and uh, going to the sorceress yep. to figure out what all this is about. And that's when she introduces him to the knowledge that there is a King Grayskull. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or there was a King Grayskull, I should yep, say. The, Not his. That hidden room in Castle Grayskull with the uh, yeah. the pistons and all that. And that was kind of weird. Why rewatching it is, is that there's that... It's like a pneumatic door instead of just like... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it could have just been a magical entrance. It did, I don't know. It was, it was weird seeing, like, the pistons and stuff inside mm-hmm. Castle Grayskull. Because to me, yeah, there's a lot of technology and, like, medievalness, whatever you want to call it, on Eternia. But for me, like, Castle Grayskull has always been, like, before all that. Like, it's so ancient yeah. that it doesn't. And I know I know people are going to go, well, the original playset had computers and this and that. But my, uh, for me, Castle Grayskull has always been more the magical, you know... Uh, Agreed. Uh, castle. So that that was a little off putting, but minor nitpick. Well, a minor nitpick for me in 2000X in general is Gray Skull on there is never going to be the filmation one, right. and that's that's one of the few places where it really fell short for me on the entire show. So anybody who thinks that I love 2000X without any any possible nitpicks yeah you're wrong there's <laughs> definitely nitpicks yes but still this is still more a 
concise version of what I want to see out of the story. So, um, but yeah, we get introduced to uh, here's, here's this King. No one has ever heard of this guy up until this episode, King Grayskull. And Adam's like, well, that's who I saw in my dream and all that. And it's the idea he's getting like a, a vision because that's his ancestor kind of like, you know, there's, there's like a whole, Hey, here's a warning for you, kid. Basically there's, there's trouble coming up on the horizon and all that. And so through, um, through the sorceress, then that, uh, Adam gets to find out about the history of this ancestor that he knows nothing about. And we, as the audience know nothing about, um, now, how, so, how did you take the ancestor in this? Do you think she's saying, like, it's a legit, like, Adam, Randor, and then way back in the bloodline is King Grayskull? Or do you did you take it just as, like, the, the ancestor as in because of the He-Man connection? Well, I think anytime I hear ancestor, I automatically assume it's a bloodline. Yeah. But in the case of this... It, to me, it makes maybe more sense that it's the key between him and He-Man right. and Grayskull because he's using that power in order to become He-Man each right. time. And, you know, they share that commonality that they are the protector of Eternia in that right. way, perhaps. And that's, um, that's how I always took it as, is that this is He-Man's ancestor, not necessarily, even though he it was a king, not necessarily yeah. Adam's direct ancestor. Because I feel mm-hmm. whenever you get the bloodline so... I don't know. I think we talked about this a little bit before. It's like when you get the bloodline where like everybody's related to everybody, it kind of dampers or hinders what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And honestly, like I don't need every, like we already have in 2000 X, we have the Keldor Randor connection. That's enough. That's like to me, that's more than enough. And so I agree on that level because if you start getting into everybody's related to everybody, it's becoming this weird incestuous thing yep. after a while that it's like it, it takes it takes a lot of the punch out of other people coming in yep. to do other things. Because what then Hordax Skeletor's uncle or something right. now, you know, like how that's well, exhausting. And then, and then, so. well, you know, not the tangent because we'll get to this episode, but then like you have Fisto coming in and he's man at arms yeah. brother now. And it's like, yeah. No, why can't these? Oh. Why can't everybody just be these these warriors? Phone call. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right, but yeah, there's a point where it's like, well, why can't we just have stuff happen and have new interesting characters? And it, you know, not everybody has to be. Oh my God, this person's related to this or this person. You know, it's not. It's that soap opera thing. It's like you're my secret long lost. You know uncle's cousin and it's like no it's after a while so <laughs> well it's like it's, you are my uncle's father's first husband's roommate da, 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 da. what does that make what's us that make nothing us? <laughs> yeah exactly so uh, yeah and and that's the and i know we'll get more into that at the end of the episode but i just wanted to i just wanted to throw that out there that's the way yeah. i took it from first watching it it's not that like king grayskull's bloodline became the the Eternals Palace bloodline, you know, mm-hmm. but that's just the way well, I look at it. Well, the other, I, I guess, here's the thing that I would say though: when they say ancestor, there is an aspect of the bloodline might be there, because right. in a way, if you wanted to not have it be a bloodline, but you have it be a lineage somehow, mm-hmm. you would say the King Grayskull is the predecessor to yeah. you. Yeah. So in that way, it's like there is a murkiness to how that's worded. And I think the intention is there to say King Grayskull is definitely you're a descendant of this guy, but right. they don't really they don't really have the family tree going with it. So, yeah, it could be predecessor in that. Yeah. Be at it. least so, at least there's a leeway there. The way it's written, yeah, yeah. they don't define it. So, you know, at least that way you have a way out if if, you know, you ever return to this universe or do sure. you know, more stuff with it. But yeah, so then we jump back into the past here, and you know King Grayskull, he's he's talking to to his wife uh, Queen Vina, who's the original sorceress, um, and she, you know, he's talking about how he, he was hoping that you know with him losing his sword and them uh, subduing the Snake Men that there was going to be peace for a while, but then Hordak showed up now, and 
Uh, basically, the Horde and the Snake Men are now going at it. They're trying to... Mm -hmm. They're settling their thing, and then whoever is a victor out of that is planning on coming for uh, Grayskull, which you see Castle Grayskull is not only just a castle here, there's a whole village around it. This is the center uh, of Eternia right now in this day and age. So mm -hmm. it's not just him, it's, it's his people. So he's even got an extra worry on there that Adam doesn't have to... Where at least when the fight goes to Grayskull for Adam, it's like okay, we can just defend. You know, he's mm -hmm. got a whole bit. He's got all his people to worry about at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that quite a lot. And then you also get an idea of the ranks of the horde there, mm -hmm. and you're seeing there's there's characters that up until 2000X were never introduced. So you're seeing the horde at like a very huge number compared to what I was used to seeing as a kid, at least. And these guys, they're, they're, they're not joking around. Yep. This is like an, an actual conquering army coming to Eternia to do what they're going to do here. Yep. And, um, I even like that in that moment you get to see Hordak will even take out his own troops because yeah. we have the classics, uh, figure Calic, Calix, sorry, Calix. Calix. Yep is there and he's trying to impart a little bit of wisdom and because of that Hordak's like yeah no thanks and he just blows him up and then here's something that i heard and i don't remember where i heard it but apparently calyx is somebody that rebuilds himself well that was added in in the classics camp. it was that in the classics by okay because because it, it amused me to think he's he's basically the guy that anytime Hordak gets mad i'm gonna blow up calyx again i'm gonna prove yeah. my point for you you know and just get uh, like that way about it yeah it's funny so. I, I was gonna bring that up too because basically so so uh the snake men lost to the horde they got defeated pretty badly so and then but Hordak is preparing his assault on grayskull and calyx is like look you know Hordak, we're 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 hurt right now. We we won, but we're not at our full strength. We should wait and attack later when we're at full strength again. And Hordak's just like, I don't want to hear that. I don't like bad news. And he kills Calix, and mm -hmm. he's he's this big rock guy. And basically, Calix was written into his story. He's created just to die. He's the red yeah. shirt of the 2000 X. <laughs> um, I like that. But then the classics <laughs> bio because, and I got it right here. Um, it says he possessed the ability to crumble into pebbles and reform his body, making him an indestructible warrior. And to me, that just cheapens the death here. Like, I like it where he's just, he's dead. They killed him. And All right, that's hang it. On, what? So, yeah, I think the classic, I mean, the classic bio again ruined this scene. But taking it just as in 2000X. It's an awesome scene that shows Hordax even willing to kill his own warriors whenever he pleases. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I did. I did like. So you got basically that that whole first horde group. You know, you got Modulok, you got Grizzlor, you got Leech, um, and then but then they amplified him with the army of horde troopers that we're more used to seeing from you know the Shira series. So that yeah. that was nice. It was nice seeing the overwhelming force but still keeping it like the core horde right here. Um, mm -hmm. I know part of that is a licensing with film, with uh, classic media at the time who owns the film, who owned the filmation library. But I have a feeling if we had ever actually seen the horde come back as a regular threat that they would have then added on, you know, like Catra, Scorpia, Shadow Weaver. Um, mm -hmm. the door, once again, the door's open there. You've got, you your Praternian horde, and then you could still add the new members in the present day. And I, I actually like this version of the horde quite a lot anyway, because they, they did go with the mystical approach. I like that we got the horde race figures and classics because of this episode. Mm -hmm. And that gave that feeling of, you know, he's always got this council of darkness right. around him as Hordak. And I love that aspect of it where, you know, he dabbles in this ancient arcane magic. He dabbles in the ancient, um, the the various, um, the pieces of, of uh, I can't think of the actual word, and it's driving me nuts. The, the, the various totems and stuff that yeah. they use on the show and, and things like that, because he's there with the, uh, the triad of Decidium on the separation episode we talked about and stuff. 
So I, I love that version of it where he's the guy that's willing to go into like the hellish depth of yep. things to accomplish his means. And, um, and so this, this, this broadens that approach. Right. He's got the army and they look industrialized in a sense right. that way. But then I love that you have those flying wraiths around there too, right. to give you that he's, he's dabbling in both worlds. So. Right. And then, you know, it can easily leave the door open. And there was a lot of speculation about, you know, where exactly they went when they were, you know, sent away. You could easily leave the door open for him to actually be sent to Etheria, and that's when he starts, you know, amassing. That's when he meets Lightspinner and makes her into one of his race, and that's when she becomes mm-hmm. Shadow Weaver. You know, you yep. even have the... I mean, here he tried his big magical approach, so as much as Sean went like it, you could even say that once he gets to Etheria, he realizes, well, I need something else. All these dark arts aren't cutting it. I still lost to a guy with a freaking sword. So yeah. uh, maybe that's when he starts uh, switching more, you know, technology, and then we can finally have the transforming arm. So then you'll be happy, Sean. <laughs> uh, hey, I don't know. In, in the case of 2000X, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I actually wouldn't have minded if he came back and he had the industrial aspect of mass producing things. Right. But maybe he still had at the deep down he was still the way that we know Hordak on this series. But yep. you know what could have been? There's always the big what always, ifs on, on this e- uh, series, no matter what we do. Especially this episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah, we we get to see him willing to take down his own people because they're they're not giving him the news he wants to hear. Which I like I like that a lot. It's showing that he he's ruthless in that way. And then uh, Vina uh, says to King Grayskull, you know, w- there is a way of, of possibly getting the power that we're going to need to stop the Horde. But she's worried that the chances of, of, um, of him surviving this might not, you know, he's, he's less and less that he's going to be alive when all this is over. Right. But she was, tells him about this Oracle of Zalatia. And so... He he's like, well, if I'm gonna bring bring peace to my land, this is what I have to do, and I must go. So he leaves his council and her, and goes off on this quest with Battle Lion to go find this oracle. Right. Yeah, and then he, uh, you know, he's near the city of Zalesia. He, we get to see Zalesia where it's not just ruins, you know. Yeah. Um. And, and basically he's, he's, and here's, here's where it kind of starts getting me because the Oracle is a trawling wizard. Um, yeah. Who, who appears and, you know, he tells Grayskull that he, he can help him find the power he needs to defeat Hordak, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, and he doesn't know if he's up to it. And King Grayskull says, you know, I would, I would, I would do anything to save Eternia, even if it meant giving up my life. Um, Mm -hmm. and the Oracle gets a little uncomfortable and he's like, well, uh, yeah, but, uh, here's what you can do. Um, but for me, it's, it's kind of the almost, uh, uh, too much similarity. It's like, why why did this have to be a trolling? Yeah. Um, And here again, to me, that takes away the specialness of Orko because it, and classics did it too. In their bios, they very much linked uh, Trala and Eternia throughout history. And to me, that again, that cheapens, you know, Orko coming through, you know, randomly, depending on which canon you're looking through, and being, you know, a help to He Man and Adam. Um, if it's like, oh yeah, Trollins come to Eternia all the time, you know, there was that guy, mm-hmm. you know, back then, there's this guy, this guy, this guy, it, it cheapens it. I, th- I think I would have liked it better if it was just an Oracle. Or even reuse the Oracle of the Crystal Sea, which I think they probably could have gotten away with, because I doubt Classic Media was paying that much attention to a one-off character from an early Filmation episode. Um, yeah, or, I mean, honestly, there's a couple different ways I was thinking of last night and this morning that it could go. Um, we can do that later on at the end of this, yeah, it, yeah. like to talk about some of that. But basically, yeah, the minute that he shows up, the first time I watched this, and this is you know going on a, a while ago now, yeah. fifteen years ago since I last watched it the first time, I, I remember rolling my eyes at this moment because it's yeah. not something that makes sense in the way that everything's painted in the this era of right. Masters for me. 
So, you know, the fact that here we are, we're tying in the Trollins, like you said, that, that for me was like, do we really need to do this? Like, couldn't it right. be, he has to go and there's, there's like a wizard or somebody that he's going to meet or, uh, you know, like a woman or a man yeah, I mean, or anything. some form of energy or something like a light hope character, yeah. even where it's an energy and it, that might help in making everything else feel a little less like what the hell, because I know there are people out there that when they get to this episode, the amount of stuff that happens to make people go, well, King Grayskull is the source of the power. It's like that never is explained properly to make everything else pay off. So we'll get there. But we'll get there. I, the whole point though, is yeah. it, this would have been a great chance to go, let's go completely off the map and do something crazy. So it makes sense, maybe. And instead here we are. Yeah. It's a trial. Yeah, this could have been a great opportunity to introduce another new co character. It's like, I like Vina. Yeah. I like that she's like shades of the sorceress. And it makes sense because of her connection to Grayskull and that she's the one who kicked off the sorceresses of Grayskull. Mm -hmm. But after that point, it's like, okay, let's just, let's see some new, you know, I love my new characters if they're done right. So let's see some new mm -hmm. characters. Let's flesh out Returnia a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. But yeah, so he sends him on this quest through... He's got to go through the corridors of Lithos, and he's got to go through Dragon Valley, uh, and he's got to climb, uh, no, he's got the, was it, the Thorn Jungle? Mm-hmm. Um, he's got to travel through all these dangerous lands to get to Mount Imperium um, in order to, to find this power. Yeah. So he takes off, and he does all that. And, he, and this part here is really where they, they either needed to make this a two-parter, or they needed to take one or two of these out because <laughs> it's like, I like, I like their, the message that they get to, but it's, it's, it's too quick. It's too easy for me every time. I, and yeah. I remember thinking that even when I first saw it and I know you've, it's, it's the, you've got to assume that it took longer than it actually did on screen, but I still felt this would have been like, like this would have been a good halftime right here. And then as he sets yep. out on the quest, be the start of a second episode. Agreed completely. Trust me on that one. I, they, they're, they're, it, it's, it, this, it, this is part of why I, I chose this episode. This, this episode for me is the equivalent of the multiverse comics right now because there is a lot that could be mined from this to make a lot more episodes than what we were given. Mm -hmm. And we're, instead of six ep issues to go through all this <laughs> world trotting and craziness, we have one episode where it reveals a lot of this stuff, and it feels like we barely scratched the surface of what could have been done. Exactly. So, yeah, there is there is definitely some correlation to that. That's why I was like, <laughs> it's pre Turnia, but it's also the storytelling of this one that made me go, I want to go here now, finally. Right. So. But yeah, it's, it's fun seeing him. He runs through, you know, the corridors of Lithos is nothing. He just travels through there. Um, yeah. And then Dragon Valley, he's basically just, like, really quick, and he, he jumps around and runs through passages and evades the dragons um and then the one that kind of gave him a second was the was the the thorn jungle which you almost got the vibe that this is where evil seed hung out back in the day which would have been mm -hmm. cool here if there was actually some threats like if he got to thorn jungle and evil seed popped out and like attacked him like that would have been a mm -hmm. cool tying um but uh it was it's basically that old riddle it's like there's two paths one leads, or they both lead in, but only one leads out, mm -hmm. and it's it's the footprints in the in the sand. It's oh, well, mm -hmm. that has that only has footprints leading in, and this has footprints leading either way. So apparently, it must never rain here. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I mean it's it's a cute <laughs> little thing, and it's like you know, as a kid, I'm sure that would have blown my mind. Like, oh yeah, look how smart he is. Like, which is the point? It's showing that he has wisdom. He he stops and thinks. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so they make it through all those obstacles, and then we have, you know, Battle Lion doing, he, he set the bar for Battle Cat because he does what Battle Cat always does in these episodes, and he passes out. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first of the best. There mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> so apparently, this has been a problem with green animals on Eternia since Preternia days. They just, they can't yep. hang. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then he and then so he gets to Mount Imperium and he and I know it's we're going through it quick because it is. It's like two minutes of, of the episode. Uh that's yeah. that's the shame. It is really this quick. I probably took longer talking about it than it actually happened. And this exactly. is supposed to be his big trials. Yeah. Um <laughs> but uh so then he climbs Mount Imperium and he finds uh this cave and there's the Oracle again sitting there waiting for him. Yep. Which which once again it's like, okay, it's I don't know. Maybe it may have been longer, you know, maybe this would have felt like a better like hang on a second. Yeah, maybe if it maybe if it been a little longer, this this next scene with the Oracle would have felt like, like a little bit more payoff that he's waiting for him, you know? Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, and this is definitely the part that I know there are fans who are like, "What?" Yeah. And I mean, leading up to this moment, I'm not really that surprised by what they're about to say. But yeah. Anyway, long story short, I, yeah. I, I like I li- I get the moral message and I like it. I get why it needs to be done because this is a show for kids. At the end mm-hmm. of it all. Um. But yeah, go ahead. But but uh yeah he he goes hey look look over there look check what's in the box and they, he opens up the box and it's he says uh, the oracle's like oh it's a it's a sword of great power yeah. you know and and then he it, King Grayskull's holding it and he's like well this is just my sword there's nothing powerful about it and then that's when we get the well it was all you all along right. you have the power you have the power and inside of you you had the power Yay. inside of you all along Yay. and it's like. It's very much like, you know, there's no place like home, yeah. you know, you had it with you all along, you know, Rainbows and, and butterflies. Exactly. And, and it's like, the more, you know, and then there's yeah. that star flying across the screen. And, um, and yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of people watching the episode who groaned or probably said things that we normally wouldn't say in this kind of a right, right. podcast. <laughs> but yeah, like for me, I, I was pretty much like, out of all the ways that we could tell this story, this is definitely not helping it right now. Yeah. Like it's, it's not like, okay, again, we're, we're going to address this probably after we're done talking about the, the, this, this show. But the thing is, there is no standard of Grayskull having any sort of power other than being a King and being a warrior that would make you believe this is the guy that now has the power right. that is fueling Adam every time he says by the power of Grayskull. Right. But here we are. This is what we're we're told at this point. Mm-hmm. And you know, he basically it's the whole the power is inside you, and then right. you know, Grayskull's about to go and leave the cave and he's got his sword back again, and then we have the the um the ominous message from yeah. the oracle saying if if you if you do complete this task you're not going to survive right you will not survive the battle with Hordak. period you're yeah. not going to survive the battle yeah and and gray skull just turns and he keeps going back to the castle and it's the whole you know this is what i have to do and now that it's I, very gary gary cooper high noon here in this case that, <laughs> like that i really liked i liked that as a test it's like which it wasn't just a test. It, I mean, it's true, but like that test, I can get behind. Like the, is he the type of hero who, even knowing there's no way he gets out of this, if he still ri- will rise up to the challenge? Now that's mm-hmm. a test right there. Yeah, and you know? and, and that to, that was way more potent. You're right. right. That's that's such a better ingredient to this than all the other aspects of this. Because test. In, yeah. and I feel you know getting back to stuff we talked about a long time ago, I feel that's the heart of Adam. You know, in, in He Man is that he will always do what needs to be done. He will always do the right thing no matter what. And this here is where you're kind of seeing like, okay, here's the roots of it. Like mm-hmm. he's going after this guy who he knew he wasn't going to live. He knew there was no chance of himself living, and he still showed up on that battlefield. And he did what he had to do. Um, yeah. So that this is the first time in the episode where you're where I'm feeling like, okay, yes, this is what they mean as the ancestor of He-Man. Like he was the first guy who to do with it to do it no matter what. So I like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean the the thing coming up too that kind of gets me in this episode is how is it that and 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 this again it shows perfectly what you're just talking about. 
how is it that out of everybody he's amassed around him, who are his advisors yeah. or counsel, yeah. and we get to see elements of them in this episode more than any other episode except mm-hmm. for probably the beginning because those are the Council of Elders right. in the beginning. But how is it that none of them – are having his back when he's doing what he does on the battlefield in front of Grayskull at the end of this episode. That is a huge problem I have with this episode on top of everything else, because each of those people I'd imagine he has on his side for reasons, Mm -hmm. but you would think if he's supposed to be this leader and he's supposed to be this person who, you know, the, the, the whole lineage or whatever you want to call it that led to Adam being he-man and being someone who inspires others to want to do good and want to stand by his side against evil. How is it we can't even have one of those people on Grayskull's council even being there and even if they're scared to death of what's about to happen, having them looking at him and seeing he's courageous in this moment and actually going, you know, you, it, it's almost like the Lord of the Rings. You have my sword. You have my yes. axe. You know, that kind of a thing. Like, why can't there be a moment like that for the poor guy instead of it being, well, he's the guy taking care of everything. Right. That just drives me up the wall. Yeah. It's like, you got people. You know you got people. Why yeah. are they not with you here? This is horrible. Now, now, if this was filmation, I would have given it a pass. But this is, this is Mike Young Productions. There is no mm-hmm. reason that this should not have been the epic all-get-out battle with the Council of Eldor, Elders and and King Grayskull and Battle Lion just holding it as long as they can. Yeah. Um, yeah, and honestly, I can't remember it jumping out at me as much when I first saw this, but definitely when I rewatch it just now, I'm sitting there, that whole last sequence, I'm going, wait, why is he the only one out there? As they're all right inside the castle waiting. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's I mean, such you, a... You can go for the, like, okay, he told them all to stay in or whatever, whatever. You know, he knew he was going to die anyway, so why have anybody else out there? But I don't like it. I don't like it. It should have been a big battle royale right here. Yes. Um, yeah. Instead of King and, Grayskull trying to hold everybody off. And it should have, it, it would have told us more about this character that we've been following for the whole episode, and it's about this guy. Okay, he's, he's this leader. He's this ruler. Let it show that these people are going to amass to his cause. Right. Number one, it's, it's, it's that whole thing of, you know, even if you're scared, right. it doesn't matter. It's the whole idea of this is my home too. And if this guy is willing to go out there and protect right. it, how am I going to live here knowing he defended it? And I did, you know, that would have, that would have secured the idea of this guy is a leader exactly. and this guy, this guy amasses people to him, whether or not, they lived or they died in this moment, they would have said, I still need to follow. I need to follow my gut and my gut is with my King, you know? And it it really, it hurt the story for me to see this. And I, I, I'm sure part of it might've been just the conciseness of let's just tell the story and this whole, okay, he goes out in this blaze of glory. But for me, it's like, how much more impactful would it have been to have these people amassing to him in the last moments and him do him even saying, please go back inside. I don't want you to get hurt. And then just standing, you know, staunchly with him and being like, no, th- yes. it, it, it's like they're coming for you. They come for us. You know, that, that kind of thing. And it's like I would have gotten chills even not knowing these characters going, yeah, like he's he's managed to make them courageous on top of the fact he's being courageous in this moment. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say that I was going to say, what if you, what if you had a scene where he ordered everybody to stay in? He goes out on the battlefield and all of a sudden everyone's just behind him. And yeah. He's like, you know, and then and then have them fight and have them losing. And that's what gives King Grayskull that. I mean, think about it. If King Grayskull's pinned down. He sees all his all his warriors getting knocked down, dragged down, overwhelmed. And that's what gives him the urge to go, OK, I need to end this. And that leads into that by the power of Grayskull moment. Yeah, like, I agreed. Mean, I mean, and that's what, and we've talked about this before. We that's what we love. We love when the heroes against the wall. It seems like there's no way out, and they rise to the occasion. Um, mm-hmm. And you just don't get that kind of sense with him out there by himself. Yeah. Um, just there's the, there's the two ways, and the fact that he's tearing through all the troopers for so long without being, you know, without breaking a sweat. It's almost like, well, is the horde even really a threat? 
if one guy yeah. and a lion are, you know, holding them this long. Exactly. And the fact that he basically lets Battle Lion handle everything yeah. except for the main horde guys like uh, Mantana, Grizzlor, and Leech. And then he's there toe to toe with Hordak, and that's it. And it's like Battle Lion's just like overwhelmed. Right. Because Battle Lion's green, he's tired. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Battle Lion's yeah, going to be tired amazing. in he like 30 last, seconds. It's amazing he can even last this long without <laughs> passing out. So, I mean, yeah. out of anybody that has his back, you don't want to have a big lion that falls asleep halfway through the battle. I mean, <laughs> so, so yeah, there's there's a whole element of uh, it, it, it blows my mind they didn't do that. And there's another way I would have loved to see it, too. Um And I'll get into that really quick and then we can touch about sure. uh, touch on it like later on after this. But the other option I was thinking was how is it that Vina, being who she was, mm -hmm. and she's worried about her husband. She wants to do everything she can to make sure he survives even if she gets that impending doom of, oh, he's probably not going to live. So she turns to them and she's like, help me. And they create some sort of like a force spell on him yeah. that is part of the whole I have the power moment sure. then. Which is them basically giving him all of this energy they've amassed as themselves. And it's almost their life forces are being used in defense of him fighting for them as well. That would have been an easy pass for me too where I would have said, that's cool. Yeah. They got his back somehow. But instead, he's just there on the battlefield. He's mm -hmm. got a sword and he's got a tired lion. Yep. That's it. We're good. That's it. Yeah, so, so yeah. But, but he does, they fight. He holds them off as long as he can. He's getting his butt beat. The race, they go to create a spell to transport the entire castle and all the heroes of Eternia to uh, a terrible dimension of Despondos. And uh, and so they're creating that. King Grayskull's pinned down. And that's when we have the swell moment. The the that He Man theme kicks in, and he King Grayskull does the by the power of Grayskull, and has all this magic that he can use all of a yes. sudden. All of a sudden, so uh, he ends up <laughs> he ends up revert, and that's and that's mainly it. It's, it's there's like you said, there's nothing in the episode leading up to this that tells you that he's got any of this at his disposal. Mm -hmm. um, I. I I have a few ideas of how you can easily retcon that, but we'll get into Like you said, we'll get into that. I think we're going to yeah. have quite a bit to talk about. So we'll wrap up the actual episode here real quick. Um, and basically he turns the spell on the horde instead of it encompassing the castle. He turns it back around and encompasses the horde um, and sends all of them to Despondos. Uh, but Hordak sends a spirit image thing and kills King Grayskull at the last second before he's sucked into the portal. So yep. uh, King Grayskull dies. Uh, as he's dying, he transfer he he creates the Council of Eldors because right, up until here, they're just looking like normal humans, Caligarians, mermen, whatever they are. And he makes them into that like blue shiny council that we see in the beginning uh, with that power that he didn't know he had until 30 seconds ago. Yeah. Um, and then he transfers all the power into the sword. And, you know, he's he tells his queen that, you know, a hero will rise uh, by calling upon my name when evil returns. Um, so if, just foreshadowing all the, all of Adam's legacy. Yeah. Um, which is a nice moment. I liked I like that <laughs> moment. Um, even if, like I said, the whole problem with the episode, is where did this power all of a sudden come from? And how does yep. he all of a sudden know what to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's a nice scene. Um, and so uh, we forgot about that whole subplot, too. There's the whole subplot with Skeletor going to the la uh, Hordak Sanctuary on Eternia because Hordak has summoned him. Um, we found out earlier in the season, too, that it was Hordak who saved Keldor and made him into Skeletor. It wasn't just that acid that mm -hmm. transformed him. Um, and now it's time for, he tells Skeletor that his forces are ready to come through. It's Skeletor's time to uphold his end of the bargain and open the gateway to bring him back through. Mm -hmm. um, so then, at the end of the past story, uh, the Sorceress and Adam realize that Hordak's trying to come back through to Eternia. And so He-Man rides out 
to stop Skeletor from opening up the sanctuary and letting Hordak back. Um, and what I like about that is it's the flip the script moment for Skeletor, which is cool. Yeah, go ahead, finish her up. <laughs> because because uh, when when Skeletor gets there, He Man's there on Battle Cat already waiting for him, and you're not going to let Hordak come out of Despondos. It's, it, and then her, uh, Skeletor's basically like, like, you're right. And then he just blows up the sanctuary right. instead of fighting He-Man and rides off on his chariot laughing maniacally. Mm-hmm. And, and He-Man doing, it's almost like he doesn't want him to leave. And then uh, Evil <laughs> Lynn is in the shadows watching and she's like, very interesting. And cut the black. There you go. That's the episode. So, which, that's your episode. Uh, I, I didn't like, I don't know. He-Man just sounds so stupid there. Like, it's almost as if he didn't want Hordak to come yeah. back. It's like, well, of course he doesn't. Yeah. He's Skeletor, He-Man. Why does, <laughs> he doesn't want to share this world with King Hiss or Hordak or anybody, you know? Yeah. yeah it's true. And I, I, th- This episode for... For all it did okay. right, it, it did quite a bit like head scratching. It's, and, it's a frustrating... And it's almost... Yeah, it's like midline for that reason for me. And it, you know, like there's there's people who hate the character of King Grayskull. They they hate the idea that here's this character who is supposed to be a better version of He-Man right. and this and that. And it's like I'm a little lost at how anybody w- watches this episode and says that's really the case here. Uh, yeah, for mean- me Go, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying, just, you know, I like to play devil's advocate and everything. There, There is, I mean, I, I get where people are coming from. I think any time, I didn't like the classics bios for a lot for doing the whole lineage of He-Man, you know, where there's one Dar and there's Vicor and, you know, all that. Because I, I get the aspect of if you have an original, then it cheapens the new one, you know. Um... But I, th- I think there's not enough presented here to say that he is the original He-Man because I feel He-Man is a level above. Um, regardless of what maybe production notes said or, you know, unreleased material for because I know there's a lot of unreleased material that's leaked out over the years, that's not canon to me. So, you know, I can bypass all that. Mm-hmm. So for me, in the confines of this episode... Uh, King Grayskull is not a better He-Man. He, he, you know, he may be an ancestor. He may have contributed to the lineage of He-Man, but like he couldn't even survive one battle with Hordak. So he's yeah. he's not as powerful. He doesn't have the well, even though he somehow does have the magic, he doesn't have control of it. Um, he doesn't he doesn't have the masters like He-Man does. He doesn't rely on other people. That showed you know at the end there. So to me, he's mm-hmm. not. In the in the constraints of the episode, he is not the better He Man. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's perfect. And and uh, I don't know. To me, I know there's people that didn't like him because uh, there already was a character that could have been used, which yep. was Hero. Oh yeah. And you know, there's a huge amount of people out there that they would have rather seen Hero be the guy here instead of worrying about a, a, a King Gray Skull that was never ever introduced until this episode. I think for me. I like the fact that they introduced the King Grayskull character for the simple fact that the idea of Grayskull and having that mysteriousness to it, then all of a sudden you say, that's actually a dude's name. There was actually a guy that lived here at one point. That interests me in a way. It it opens up the idea of what the history behind Grayskull is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it could have been the whole thing like we talked about where here's this, this giant being that died and this is now the the castle, the castle is yep. the skull you know yeah but the the as- bible yeah like okay so what if what if he took re- residence there right. you know what if he's this guy there's this element of it where i kind of dig that and i don't mind the idea that you know he is 
he's maybe the, the, the way I look at him. And I, I always explain it to people who don't like King Grayskull is I say, he's the guy that got the ball rolling for Adam to become he man and be the superpower. He is right. to protect Eternia. I don't look at him as being better. I don't look at him as being more powerful. I just look at him as this is the beginnings of what we needed to make the fight between he man and Skeletor be what it is. And all the other factions that show up mm -hmm. during the same time. Um, but I, I'm not going to say that I, I can't think of how a uh, hero could have been used in this episode exactly. because I think he would have been amazing in this episode. Well, it, it, if you wanted, if it could have been two parts, yeah, that that would be my only stipulation. I, I feel like in order to get hero in this episode, he would have had it would have had to be a bigger episode. Because you would have needed time to also introduce him because we're introduced to Grayskull right. and all the other stuff going on. Uh, it's it's in here again, and that's why a lot of people hate King Grayskull as well, is that they feel it, it eliminates Hero from the mythos. And I disagree with that. I, I don't see any reason why it, why it eliminates him. It might change his backstory a little bit. Um, and for those who don't know Hero... Was was back in the eighties? They were gonna shift. They did He Man. They did Masters of the Universe. They did she -Ra, Princess of Power, and they were gearing up for uh, their third toy line, which is gonna be the Powers of Grayskull. And it was supposed to follow this warrior wizard hero and his adventures in Preternia. And it was teased that we were gonna find out, you know, how Grayskull was formed, where the power comes from, um, and it was gonna dig into Preternia. You know, the same kind of time period we're talking about here. Um, and in, in, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about a couple things that I'll talk about with my ideas, but, uh, but so in the powers of Grayskull in 87, um, he was supposed to be, uh, he was a warrior wizard. He was supposed to be the, he managed Shira's ancestor. Um, and he would have transformed like them. He would have been a villager named Gray who, uh, when he went into a mysterious cave, he became transformed <laughs> into Hero, the most powerful wizard in the universe. So he had a, like a he had an incantation. I was reading last night too, because I actually dug into the Hero yep, yep. aspect. I don't remember the incantation like was I can the, pull He Man's easily though. Well, and that's the other problem is there was like three or four different ones because Filmation uh, was actually working on it, and they had mm -hmm. like two types. And actually, some of what Filmation worked on ended up becoming, like, into new adventures as well. It was a very weird period there where Powers okay. of Grayskull kind of led into uh, new adventures uh, for Filmation. And then Jetlag ended up taking over the Filmation new adventure stuff and running with it. And um, we probably need to do a whole episode on that at one point, honestly, because there's a lot of weird stuff there. Um hmm. But uh, yeah, but uh, and he was in that he was under the tutelage of Eldor. That would have been like his man at arms slash sorceress. Um, mm -hmm. and, and but anyways, it would have followed his adventures and how Grayskull got his power, which him being a wizard to me. And I think a lot of people always assume that somehow he would have ended up being the source of Grayskull's power. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the DC comics that they did back 2012 ish. Um, they set up, they still brought Hero in, but he was the son of King Grayskull and Vina, and he led uh, the resistance uh, after his father died um, when times were okay. getting tough. So, and then he, him and Eldor are the ones who chose to hide away the Sword of Power until Destiny revealed its heir. So, you know, a couple, so, you know, there's still ways. Oh, and mm -hmm. uh, MV Creations. I know Emiliano Santolucia, he came up with a bunch of stuff that they never got to use, unfortunately, when they were doing comics during the 2000X line. And theirs was... And I'm going off memory here, so someone someone forgive me if I, if I get this mixed up. But basically, the basic premise was you would have had Grey raised in a village, you know, kind of like we saw in the 80s. He would have became Hero... Um, and he would have helped bring the power to Castle Grayskull, um, and then he would have been mortally wounded in battle, Hero would have, and, uh, he was gonna be, I think we lost, 
And he, Hero would have been mortally wounded in battle, and they would have saved his life by getting a blood transfusion from Titus, who was a giant, and then Hero would have become King Grayskull, and that's why he has the massive stature. Hmm. Okay. So, so they would have direct NBC wanted to make actually make Hero become King Grayskull and make them the okay. same person. So there, there's lots of play already about what people can or will do. Um, for me personally, the way I always looked at it as. And, and this wasn't all at once, but just over the years, you know, I like my head canning, and I know you've got your own, so I'll do mine right quick, and then you can you can give your thoughts, and we've talked about this before. I always thought, especially with the episode doing the whole the powers inside you all along thing, I always thought, okay, Castle Grayskull predates even King Grayskull to me. It's this ancient fortress, and you can set it back as far as you want. Because, to me, Castle Grayskull has, has pretty much always been on Eternia. Um, it's, an, it's an ancient fortress. So for me, I'm saying, okay, so put Grey and Hero and do all that, but set it even farther back than King Grayskull. And so he's the one who actually either forms the castle, or, he, like I said, he puts the power into the castle. Um, and then he has his adventures, whatever. Time passes. Castle Grayskull gets forgotten. Even have these... These great wars that decimate Eternia. And then one day, this guy, you know, he's raised in a village. They're barely surviving. And he goes out and he sets forth and he decides, I'm going to help save Eternia because it's fa- it's just it's falling into decay. It's falling into ruin. And so he leaves his village. He gathers his friends, you know, and he become and, and he learns about this ancient castle, Castle Grayskull. And eventually he conquers whatever evil there is and he takes his seat of power at Castle Grayskull and starts rebuilding Eternia and he gets crowned King Grayskull. And that's where we build up here. So pretty much take that early Alcala He-Man origin, but give that to King Grayskull. Mm -hmm. And to me, so then, so then you're not putting the power of Grayskull on King Grayskull. And so now he's in control of Castle Grayskull even had the power sword be something that he gets along the way or he discovers it once he's in Castle Grayskull and that sets up that the power was all inside of you but you didn't know it because he didn't have the training. He didn't know what all he was getting when he took over the throne of Castle Grayskull. Mm-hmm. Um, and that leads him to discovering it. And, and, you know, and again, it still puts him as a step, a significant milestone. He's the first one that uses that sword to tap into the power of Hero, the power of Grayskull. And so it gives him his significant step along the way, but he's not the sole originator who didn't even know that he had magic. Mm-hmm. So that that's my headcanon. So. There you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way, there, like I said, there's a couple ways I look at this episode, and for me... The, the one that I started kicking around in my head the most last night and the one that I think I'm getting like chills thinking about it right now, or at least goosebumps because chills <laughs> means that I have the coronavirus oh. apparently. Um, <laughs> I can't resist. You're six there. feet away from me right now, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, that's the wrong way. So, <laughs> so uh, all right. The idea that I'm, I'm trying to basically the way I'm looking at it is I'm trying to keep it with elements of this story framing it. So I'm not trying right. to mess with how the, the layout of the story was, right. but I'm broadening the scope in my yeah, opinion that, of how the, that, that was my was. thought, too. It's like this whole episode plays the same, but by yeah. adding these things, it makes it make more sense. So, yeah, mm-hmm. same idea. So so basically the Oracle for me is out. Yeah. That has to be gone because that that whole thing is what set us on the road to the power is in you that way, which to me is like, no, right. I, 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 I'm good without that. But what I would have loved to have is Vina say to Grayskull, there, there is this there is this wizard and he's in, you know, he, he go, go to the um, go to Zalatia, mm-hmm. meet with this wizard. Yeah. So he goes there and it's Eldor. Sure. 
and he meets with him and he's like, you know, and Eldor knows about that. Oh, oh you're, you're here to, mm-hmm. you're here to find a way to, to solve the problem of attorney and this and that and, and have Eldor go, you know, I, I've, I've kind of, I, I've, I've become a hermit because of the problems of Eternia. Right. And I just choose to live my simple life in this and that. But I have this apprentice and he knows things and he can help with things. I've trained him as best as I can. And here he is. And it's, it's uh gray. Yep. Yep. And, and it's like the idea then is him saying, you know, gray can aid you in your mission. And it's the idea of the two of them because here we are. This character in most people's minds is replacing Hero. Right. Let's just go for it. Let's just say here's these two guys. And Hero, or I should say Gray, is seeing this world outside of where he was. Yep. And he's been just like taught and he's be, been a, a, a student. And, you know, his, his world is very insular. Right. And that's how Eldor has been. He's he's been like, okay, we're we're just focusing on this. The outside world doesn't matter at this point. It reminds me a little bit of um, to to go uh, cartoony. Uh, it's it's a little like when uh, Poe in, in Kung Fu Panda is being trained yeah. while all the other warriors are out going after the big bad guy in the first one. And it's like here's Poe getting trained, and he's actually getting good at what he can learn from Master Sifu. Right. You know. Um, so, you know, the idea then is Gray is unsure in himself. And Gray is somebody who's like, I shouldn't be taking this up. This should be something you should do to Eldor. And Eldor is like, my time has passed. He's like, I've been training you all along to get you to the point where you're now going to take my place. You're younger. You have this ability. I've given you all that you need to know to do this. And he sends Gray on his way. And the two, both Grayskull and him are trying to figure out how to make this work. And it's this whole mystery of how how is hero supposed or how is Gray supposed to help him and all this kind of stuff. Okay. And along the way, there would be these these moments where you know it, Gray Skull gets to see Gray has these abilities. He is the wizard. He has these powers and stuff like that. And, and when it finally gets to the point where you know the, the horde is there at the gates of Gray Skull, and you know like. Uh, Grayskull's about to go and fight the Horde. That would be the rallying moment where Gray would look at everybody surrounding Grayskull and go, why aren't you helping him? Right. And them going, you know, he wouldn't want that. Or, you know, doing something where it would just be this whole thing of Gray just, like, going, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, I, I've been in yeah. – I've been – I've been insulated for so long, but even I know you can do something here and you're not trying to step up and do anything. And maybe he would be the one to start them saying, we need to give him something that he can't have. He's a warrior. He's not a sorcerer. We need a sorcerer to fight this. And then that would be when Gray would then become hero in that way. And he would be the one leading them into helping him from a sorcery standpoint while Grayskull is attacking them on a warrior standpoint. And, you know, you get that okay. whole big fight and you have, here's this kid that sees inspiration in this leader and all these other people aren't even rising to the occasion. And the kid is the one that actually gets everybody else off their butts for the minute right. and actually go, well, we can't be out there on the battlefield with them, but we can do this. Right. And he, they, they, they cast like a protection spell mm-hmm for Grayskull, and that would be the beginnings of him having this power. They would be using their their focused energies and and protect him in that sure. way or whatever throughout this whole situation. And then, like, at the end of it, yeah, Hordak would still get him, and he would be dying and stuff. But the thing that drives me nuts is I wouldn't want Grayskull to tell me crap there. I think Grayskull would die. Right. And I think what would happen is Hero would be the one to look at the situation and go, you know, th- this isn't going to be the only time this ever happens. Like he right. now, now that he's embraced, he's hero right. and all that stuff. It's the idea of, you know, there's other things out there that you don't even know about. And he's like getting the, the mystical veil has been right. taken from his eyes. And it's like, he sees all of these other challenges and he, he's like, we're going to need help. And the idea then he would take the, the life force mixed with the protection energies that they gave him during the battle. And he would imbue the sword with that. And he'd say, 
there there has to be someone who is worthy of unleashing this power for the means to do good against all the darkness out there. And that person will have the power at their disposal. And the idea of I have the power, well, that's the power you have is the day that he fell on the battleground, his life force and that power that they imbued him with is the beginnings of all of that stuff to create he man. So he's having the power of this King Plus this energy from however many, what was it, 10 people in the Council of Elders or eight, whatever, like that, eight, yeah, eight, yeah. The, he'd have all that plus an hero on top of that, sure. being like the lightning rod person in the middle of all this battle and stuff. Yeah, you like don't, e- you don't even w- necessarily have to do it right then. I mean, you could do it, and then hero goes and has his adventures, and at the end of his lifetime, he goes, well, I, I need to set this up so that there can be someone else eventually. You know, yeah, and uh, it could be even Vienna giving him the sword. Right, it's the idea that he was the one that actually during the whole thing, like I, I like the idea. I've always been a sucker for those stories where there's the hero in the middle of everything, and he's going, you know, yeah. it's too big, I can't do this. And there's always that moment where somebody pushes them out into the spotlight and goes, "You got to do this," you know, and and he would be that character because Grayskull is already willing to do that. Right. So the idea, here's this kid who feels he's been untried and he's going up against this force with this guy and this guy's willing to lay down his life to do it. I mean, at least you yeah. give him somebody having his back in that moment. It's, it's, it's yeah, ridiculous. That, that's and that's missing, exactly. The, the only other way that I want to see it really, really quickly, and I, I've had this in my head for a while too, is the, the idea of Grayskull being somebody who has united Eternia. And, you know, that's how he became the king. And that's why he is who he is. So the idea of the Council of Elders being people that he, it's almost like the Randor thing where Randor is amassing his council later on in season two, so that that way they can protect Eternia from all different, different enemies and stuff. He would have been the first one to do that because Eternia and and that time would have been savage and all this stuff. So you have Grayskull going to each faction building up Eternia and that's how he gets his counsel. These are like the wisest of those people Absolutely. and they are, they've amassed themselves with them and they bring elements of their, their corners of Eternia to the table with him. And that's how he gets the power even is the idea. It's the unification of Eternia, all of the good standing against all the evil. And that's the whole, when he yells, I have the power, it would be because he's united the planet against the whore and against all evil that would, and he is the defender of that. That would have been an easier way for me to go. I like that too, because it's the idea of they're imbuing him with something in order for him to protect them. You know, it's, it's the whole symbiotic relationship in that way, either way. And even yours, it's like, you know, you could have this idea that then after that point, like you said, hero could be somebody where they give him the sword and they're like, yeah. you can use this. And it's like, they look to him as you're our next defender now because right. our hero's fallen. And it starts- but there would be no speechifying with Grayskull. <laughs> Grayskull would have fallen and he might, like there might've been a moment where Gray, it, it, like Gray turns back into a, you know, like hero becomes Gray again there. And they, they like, they hold each other's hands or something. And it's the yeah. whole, it's almost like we did it, Mr. Stark, you know, that, that whole thing exactly. there. Exactly. And and Grayskull doesn't even say anything. Maybe he just smiles at him, and then he, his last breath leaves his body, and then he falls. And then Vina would be the one looking at Gray, and she would be the one saying, we are going to take his life essence. Mm-hmm. We're going to imbue it into the sword, and this is how we're going to protect ourselves from now on yep. because none of us did anything to help this guy <laughs> except for you. And then she, yep. would be, she would give him the sword and say, you know, use this in protection of Eternia, and remember him. And it's like, I'm getting more chills by that than I did by the ending of the, the way yeah. that this, the, the episode ended. Because for me, it's like somebody flat out saying, someone's going to use my name and da, da, da. It's like, no. And, it, and the idea that then Vina would look at him and say, all you have to do is, is draw it to draw the power. Just say his name in memory. Right. And then it's the idea, you know, the next time that, that hero would need to use the sword, then you hear him do the, by the power of Grayskull, skull. And it's the beginnings leading to Adam then, or whatever. Yeah. It's like, 
chills automatically. I would have been like, Absolutely. he fought with the guy, well, that, you know, <laughs> like he deserves that, you know. And that's what it boils down to. It just it needed a little something more. King Grayskull cannot stand as the lone originator of the power of Grayskull. It just it nope. doesn't work. There's got to be something else in there. So those those are just what yes. we've come up with. You know, like I said, that you know, everyone's basically everyone since this episode aired has come up with something. NBC did the classic scanning, did the DC Comics did. Everyone seems to agree it needs a little something more. Uh, this definitely would have been better as a two parter. Um, and I count. I know I looked weird a minute ago. I was counting this real tiny picture of the Council of Elders. Uh, there's nine. We were both. We were right between nine them. of them. Nine <laughs> elders. I said eight. You said ten. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what you gonna what do? you gonna do? <laughs> so uh, ranking then. Uh, this one actually surprised me. I'm only gonna go a six out of ten on this. Um, I just like we said. I just I could not ignore the inconsistencies. The Trollins being on Preternia bugged me, and that ending battle. I think even if there had been an actual like full scale uh, heroic warriors standing against the evil horde, I think it would have bumped it up a couple for me. But after reviewing it last night, I got to go a six out of ten, which surprised me how low I'm going on it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give it a seven, yeah. and the the reason being is it's just. The when whenever you pull the curtain back and give me a taste of something that led to the creation of He-Man, yep. there is an element that I'm gonna be like, like, yeah. So what's this about? And it'll perk me up a bit. I liked seeing the horde. Oh, I'm yeah. not gonna lie, the horde being in it actually made me smile. And this episode, out of any episode in 2000X, has the best version of anyone on the show yelling, "I have the power." Yeah. And it made up for every time I've had to hear, oh, I have the power. This one was the primal scream. I've been saying, where the hell is this on this series? And I, I, I actually love that moment still, even though it's, it's, there's, there's no sense of what the hell that moment yeah. is because the whole, the powers inside you still lame. Can't, can't, deny, <laughs> can't that. deny that. But <laughs> when he says it there, that's the moment where it's like, yeah, it works, and I, I mean, you're you're setting up a lot of good stuff leading into the He-Man era with, you know, yeah. you see the energy making the abyss with Gray Skull and everything, and um, but yeah, the speechifying can't take that. I didn't like the trolling aspect with the Oracle, so yeah, there's definitely some, and and the power was in you all yeah. along. I would have rather had them explain maybe he was blessed by someone <laughs> right. that gave him something that he didn't know about, that's what I'm, whatever. Right, that's where I always, you know, like, like I said, that's where I always Council chieftain. <laughs> yeah, It's like he took control where, of Castle Grayskull and he didn't know the power that he was gaining, and, which he could have used all of yeah. So that's what... Or, or, you know, maybe Vina was doing, like, to bless him all along and yeah. bestow something... That he didn't Something. realize, and it was her doing the whole, I'm trying to build you up. But there was no reference, so we're just right. spitballing. Yeah, so. and that's all we can do. Now, don't get me wrong. I gave it a 6 out of 10. It's probably one of my lowest rankings I've given so far. But it's a very enjoyable episode. It's well worth the watch. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I've got no problem sitting down and watching it. It just, for this, where we're, we're breaking it down, I, I, you know, I just, it's those things I can't look past. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, one sec. So yeah, so that's that's our power of Grayskull review. Um, the one thing we want to do before we take off here, um, for those of us who've been listening to us in an earlier episode, I forget exactly which one, uh, we did the Space Ace bio and we did a discussion. We did a discussion piece, um, and we'd said that we were gonna do another one here, um, and this time what we're gonna do is we're each gonna give each. I'm going to give Sean three characters, he's going to give me three characters, and we're going to treat it like we got a one-shot episode, comic book, however you want to look at it. You got one, one story, one shot to tell uh, a story with these three characters. Uh, got to be at least one good and one evil. Um, so, Sean, you want, to go, you want to go first or second? Second. <laughs> I'm still thinking of it. This is one of those, I was up at 2 o'clock in the morning going, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I've so give me a second. Around. I said, and, and what we're gonna do? All we're doing today is we're just gonna give each other the characters, um, and then next week we're gonna record the episode where we actually go through and discuss our story ideas. 
for this one shot featuring these characters. So, but just to give you guys a little taste of the discussion coming up, um, and I told Sean I wasn't going to be easy on him because I wanted yeah. to make him think. So, <laughs> I picked. I picked. My breakdown is two heroes and one villain. So, your first hero that you get as as uh as star of your story and i think that's basically it. like these three characters are the stars of the story i mean you can you, you can add in little characters here but basically these characters have to be the problem and the solution um so my characters you get number one you get zor the falcon <laughs> okay <laughs> you get you get uh stanlin the royal archaeologist you bastard <laughs> <laughs> you love how she okay. though i do but i don't say i like stanlin i mean <laughs> well, now you like him <laughs> oh <laughs> and, and your your villain of the issue is ninjor 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 okay. Ninjor versus zor and stan oh my god i told you i told you <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> now I'm turning into Matthew McConaughey. Um, <laughs> so, so all right, I, I did have a couple in mind, and now I'm just gonna I'm gonna wing it and see what happens here. So I did that too. Right. That, that was not my original. I, I I flipped around a lot. Even right now in my head, I was flipping around before I gave it to you because I, I it can mm. go any number of ways. So hit me. <laughs> Who am I dealing with? All right, I am going to say one, one of your guys will be, why not, Vicron. Vicron. We're going to do classics. Vicron. Of course you would do somebody I, I dislike. Ah, there you, well, I got to do Zoran Stanlin, so there you go, you Vicron. Zoran Stanlin, there you go. <laughs> <Can't lie. laughs> All right, Vicron and... Uh, let's see, Vicron and uh, Vicron and Cyclone, because I know you like Cyclone. I like I'll Cyclone. give you, I'll give you one you like. <laughs> and Demo Man. Demo Man's Vicron and Cyclone versus Demo Man. All right. So there you go. All right. <laughs> He gave me because, uh, he gave me Cyclone just as the, uh, just as the pacifier, and then he stuck me with all the all these <laughs> concept characters who he knows I don't feel should even be a part of the story. They should just be released as like a concept. Uh, yeah, I know, thing. I know. Yeah, he knew. But you gave me Zord Stan. <laughs> the only one in that I would root for is Ninja, so I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> maybe that's the, maybe that's the one shot. Maybe you know. <laughs> Ninjor bathed in blood. Amazing he's wearing blood. the he's wearing Zor on his head like <laughs> a like a weird look. It's like the the wings are coming off the sides, oh. and now his battle cry is "Kaka Kaka" when he fights anybody. <laughs> oh God! Oh, you think terrible. I'm joking? That's the best part. <laughs> it, may, it may well be. We those are all the parameters we involved there. Was just the three yep. characters. They've got to be the main focus of the story. So, uh, tune in next week. Um. <laughs> Let's see what we come up with here. <laughs> it's gonna be a bloodbath. That's what's gonna, what it's gonna be. It'll so. be a bloodbath. All right. Oh boy. Anything else we got to discuss before we sign off here, Shawnee? Uh no. I'll I'll be good. I'm I did a uh, a crossed uh, public or promotion uh, this past weekend yeah. on council. So I I did plug us on there. So I'll say, if you want to hear more from me, which I'm sure most people are like, dear God, shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm also on Council of the First Ones, if you want to tune into that. Uh, that's every two weeks, we're, whereas we are a lot more diligent, and we're once a week at least. Once a week at least. Sometimes twice. Yep. But the whole if virus the, thing is making it that we have to cut it down to one just because for the time being. Yeah, if the kids ever go um, back to school, we'll get back to that two-episode <laughs> format. If they if, ever go if. back to school. <laughs> God so beyond that, uh, that's everything for me. So yeah, I'll probably drop a link down below to cancel the first ones too. It's it's a good group. Uh, David Clark, Renee, uh, Sean's in there once in a while. Um, yep. I can't even think of the other guys' names. Oh god. Uh, uh, there's Rex and yeah, Rex uh, Kelly and Kelly. Yes. So yep. no, it's it's a it's a good group. It's a good time. They get lots of interviews too. They're they're like the they're like a real podcast. 
where it's, <laughs> it's just me and Sean goofing around they're, here. They're like, oh, yeah, we get like artists and, you know, brand managers I, and directors. And so, yeah, I tell them legit. that they slum it with me. Yes. Well, they slum it with me being on there now. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you, you, you got to have a little bit of slum. So there's all that's all there is to it. But uh, yeah, it. It, it, like you said, a lot more interviews and stuff with uh, with people associated with the brand, but it's still, you know, it, it's worth a listen to if you haven't tried it out yet, if, if you ask me. And then plus there's us, and we're worth a listen to yeah. as well. So Yep, so if you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe down below, ring that bell so you know when new episodes are premiering. Head over to Facebook, join us there. You can talk about uh, who you'd like to see, a, you know, drop us a line. Let us know if there's an episode or a book or something you're itching to talk about. Uh, maybe we'll discuss it on the show. Uh, if you want to give uh, Sean more combinations of trios that'll annoy him, uh, feel free to <laughs> pop those on there. Stanlin. Stanlin. Hey, hey, he is Stanlin. one. Of, he wielded. Stanlin. He wielded the power sword. I mean, he's he's legit. He's I, I honestly, uh, out of how annoying that character was, that moment still gets me every time Absolutely. I watch that episode. So I can't really get that upset. <laughs> but there is an element of I'm I'm already in my head going. Stanley's doing something he's not supposed to again, <laughs> and that, that's it's like my automatic go to with that character because they're all like, "You should go back to the palace." I'm gonna go in there. I'm going in there anyways. Man, <laughs> <laughs> um, <Yeah>, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll just be House of Shakoti, but instead of Shakoti, it'll, it'll be House of it'll be House of Ninja. House of Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's invading my house. Stand limb, stand I just, I just want to see now, if you have any antique doorknobs. <laughs> now Stanley, Stanley just does a lot of B and E on attorney because he's like it worked the first time. He's just know? going in every every unlocked door he can. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, if I did that, you'd be like, okay, we're not doing this ever again. You're not taking it's, it seriously. Like, look at the ammo. We're never, look at we're the never ammo. discussing it again. <laughs> Uh, anyway and on that note i'm just gonna say until next time until next time